All right, good good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> trying to figure out if it's good afternoon or good morning. Still, it's in the middle. Um, my name is Feliciana Peralta. I go by Felice. I'm in the Office of Diversity and Equity, as well as I teach in the departments of um, HDEV, College 101, and Women's Studies. Um, so today we're going through Understand Your Power and Privilege, PPI. And I kind of want to give you some back history about how this developed. Do you remember those um, little meetings that you, we got into opening day year ago, almost a year ago where you had asked all these questions and then you met throughout the year if you were able to? And you probably thought, oh, what, what, what is this going to do with? Why are we doing this? But where is this going to go anywhere? Well, actually it did. Um, planning, of, planning and accreditation looked through it and heard what people wanted to hear, like wanted to know more about. So we read every little comment and we decided it would be really good to design a series of uh, workshops that would kind of answer what people wanted to know. But also, ironically, it was the same information that we were doing in College 101. So it came out to be, A, people really wanted to know more about how our systems ran. Also looked at um, wanting to know more about diversity, how to advise a student efficiently so students are not being pinged. But as well as, on the other side, College 101, we're giving common language for the students, but yet sometimes we all need common language within each other. So we can look at how we work with each other and talk with each other and with our students and have common knowledge as well. So this is how it all designed. So those meetings didn't go just nowhere. They, they were effective in this. So that's where this came out of. And so what we are doing, this is actually taught in the classroom. Now, I only have two hours. For in the classroom, we have like four class sessions. There's a lot of activities, a lot of conversation. There's videos being shown in this. Here, I only have two hours. So that's a big disclaimer. We know that this is just like we tell the students. This is a taste, not the meal. We know that there's deeperness within this. We know that this is a complex issue. It's not quick. It's not two hours. But we want to give basic information. Also, um, with that said, we also know that we want to go deeper throughout the, the next year. So once again, I only have two hours and I want to honor your, your two hours and just kind of go with what we can get through. But we do have more time with the students. I think, oh, one more other thing. The other disclaimer is we understand, I kind of go through here, the types of inequity that happen. We understand that there's lots of systems that happen. There's, we, all, we live in lots of systems, criminal justice, we live in um, health systems, and education system is the one that we all currently live in and share. So for the purpose of this workshop, we're gonna just talk about education systems. I might bring a couple examples in within our other systems that we live within, but because that's, Clark is our common language, that's where I'm gonna stick with with this. So as you can tell, systems, there's tons of systems that are around, and they affect the institution. So Clark College is an example of an institution. So in 1933, when Clark was developed, who, who was attending Clark? Who was our main population in, in 1933? White men. White men. What was that? Farmers. Farmers. Social economically high. Mm -hmm. That was never the intent of Clark, but that's who could be able to be here at that time. You know, there was a lot of a population that didn't have accessibility to a, a higher education at that point or could attain that. So a lot of our policies and how we've done things are ran by things that might have happened in 1933. Although that wasn't our intent of the population, that's who was attending and that's sometimes how we affect, like look at the major part of the population, not all of the populations that are being within our system or in our institution. Here's the individuals that sometimes they affect institutions and systems, and sometimes our systems affect institutions and our individuals, sometimes and equitably. There's things that happen, there are barriers that happen within our systems. No one's around being a jerk going, how do I hurt this population? But that's maybe not the intent but could be the impact on some of our populations. I'm sorry that this is not a good slide. 
So this is where we talk about the difference between equality versus equity. Equality is that everybody gets the same, but that's assumption that everybody starts at the same place. Everybody gets the same information. Equality is really looking at making sure everybody's at the same place and then being equality in. Equity is all about making sure everything is equitable versus equal. And a good example of this is uh, we have a lot of first year students coming in. We have a large population of first year students here at Clark College. I think it's about 70% almost of first year students that never been to co college before. They might not have a lot of people coming in. So when they come in and we have people that have you know, students that their parents have been here, um, you know, the third generation, maybe their, their parent works here, whatever that looks like, and we go, everybody gets the same information, same. Well, we might be missing a population that they might not even know what our acronyms or what our conversations are because we're not going equity. That's where College 101 really came in because we're going to where people are at versus going, everybody gets the same information, good luck, hope you make it, because we're seeing that that's not working. The terminology we're using today is privileged status is the agent is the one who benefits from the ism systematically being in place. An agent within society has benefits if they want it or not. It automatically is, but they get some benefits within society. Um, limited privilege status is target. If you notice, it's limited. It doesn't say no privilege. It's just that there might be certain barriers that happen. The best way to describe this is from Barry Switzer. Some people are born on third base and go through their whole life thinking they hit a triple. This is where some people, the, the assumption is everybody uh, you know, has that opportunity to be on the base, or some people are waiting in the dugout or even in the stands. And this is where, oh, that bootstrap theory comes in. Just pull up your bootstraps, some hard work, and you can be like me. But the assumption is everybody has bootstraps to pull up. So these are the categories we're going to go over today. Usually. We, it's very complex stuff, identity, and how we, I identi how we identify within ourselves and how society views us and identifies us. We know that this is very complex. I have a lot more time with students to go through these and talk about them, but I'm gonna, for only two hours. These are the same as your sheet. These are the different social um, ranks, age, appearance, disability, faith base, ethnicity, social class, sexual orientation, gender, intellect, education, language, employment, professional status, indigenous background, national origin, and citizenship. These categories are the agents and those are the targets. Now, remember their limited privilege status and what, what an activity that we do in the classroom is the students would go through all of these and they best guess where they are with agents and they choose balls. Not, it's not color coded or anything. They just choose how many agents they have. So somebody can go, I have 12 categories I'm an agent in. They choose 12 balls. Mm -hmm. And everybody walks around with them. And this is a really big activity because first it's uncomfortable. And you know, you carry your privilege around. And then we have a conversation about it. And usually what's happening is the person with a lot of privilege, the balls are falling all over the place and guess who's picking up the privilege and giving it back to the person with the privilege? The people with less balls. So we talk about how that affects, what that looks like. And we really talk about this people with privilege might have not known they had that much privilege, and people with less privilege were well aware where they were. It's really um, hard, they're very intertwined. It's really hard to kind of take these apart and look at each one of them. Even though we're gonna do that today, we, it's very intertwined and it can be situational. If I get up Sunday morning and I just find whatever's on the floor to wear and put a hat on and go to the store, I might appear to be in the target status as a woman of color. And if I appear to be socially, economically not looking like this. Then when I'm in the classroom, which I do every time, every 
first quarter, or every first day within the quarter. I always follow students and with them, and I don't dress professional that day. And I go in, and every single time, like 80% of the time, they say, where is he? Where is a professor at? And then I go up in front, and I say, hi, I'm Professor Peralta. I go from the target side automatically to the agent side. And I have such agency and power and privilege within that context. I get the huge amount of respect, huge amount of power and privilege. I could say whatever I want, if, I, if it's valid or not, and I get that automatic privilege. Because that, the context of the education system, I'm the, I hit the highest part. That overrides some of the other parts of the agent, that, I mean the target. So some of these can go all intertwine and it really does, depends on situational, sometimes it does not. But this is what happens within our systems. And I'm gonna keep this conversation in the context of education within the United States. Even though this is affects the world, it's easier to kind of talk about education systems within the United States. So, yes? Just, um, I don't know whether you want to comment or not, but I'm just yeah. thinking about that. Even within our education system, there's a, a, a power and privilege yes. between full-time and part-time. Yes. And that's a, another break-off that I can see in that home. Yeah, the employment, I will yeah. definitely talk about even within our structure, we have a rank system within our structure, yeah. and we do have agents and targets within that rank system, and pretty profound. And then also the education too. Yes, we will definitely go over that, but yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out. 